forensic drug test result letter is negative. Ladies and gentlemen, your boy. Where's the proof? <laughs> Bro, just showing that it's negative doesn't prove anything. <laughs> Vigor Steve here with another reaction video to Jesse James West. Weren't we in the exact same position about a week ago talking about Jesse taking some injectable pre-workout and trying to figure out if he was still natural or not, right? Drug-free versus enhanced. I gave him my blessing based on the active pharmaceutical ingredients of the injectables that he did take. I would classify him as uh, still drug-free, but the World Anti-Doping Agency specifically mentions that you're not allowed to take anything injectable unless it's for specific medical reasons. Now, I don't think he got his injectable pre-workout prescribed because he was uh, pre-workout deficient based on the oral pre-workouts from Gorilla Mode he was taking previously. Uh, I don't have a reference range for pre-workouts, right? whether that's uh, two scoops or one scoops. Maybe he was only half scooping it and that's why he needed to go the injectable route. There's no clear medical reasons to start taking these injectable pre's. Um, I just think that he did it for experimenting purposes, which is certainly something that I highly enjoy. So based on my personal experience and um, opinion on the drug-free versus enhanced status, I would say that he was still drug-free, but I guess he didn't get the memo because he just did a doping test. So um, again, I feel specifically qualified to make a reaction video because you're surely helped a lot of athletes beat the drug test at various bodybuilding competitions worldwide, as well as in the Olympics or at national qualifiers where athletes compete to join the national team to compete in the Olympics later on right i've helped a ton of athletes beat the doping test left and right and before you start complaining right for the guys who are on social media lying about their performance enhancing drug use in order to sell products that's something entirely different when you join a national team you have to keep up appearances for your country but everybody else is using drugs whether that's at the olympics or bodybuilding competition everybody that you're competing against is on some kind of performance enhancing drugs whether those are on the world anti-doping agency prohibited list or not, or just on a monitoring list and maybe be added later on a couple of years down the line. So I feel that there's a huge difference between lying on social media and giving people false hopes um, to sell products and just pretend that you're better than everybody else when you're secretly using performance enhancing drugs. I think that's completely wrong, but talking about athletes competing at the highest level and needing a little bit of an edge and still keep up appearances for their national team and their country and their flag, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, especially considering that the price money isn't really that high anyway. So let's get started with Jesse James West and see if he's really drug free and where all the faults are in his recent doping test. Before we do, I work from a sponsor. All right, I don't have any sponsors, so uh, allow me to do a little bit more reaction videos so I can get the big bucks too. And until that moment happens, when I have some big sponsors, just like everybody else on social media, uh, please like the video, leave a comment through the algorithm, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by joining either the YouTube or Patreon memberships, where you can vote for upcoming deep dives, or join the weekly vigorous Q&A, which is always on Saturday. Then you have a whole hour to ask your questions privately before we go public, and it turns into a super chat, super flood. All right. Let's see what Jesse has to say in this recent video. Lately, there's been a lot of accusations in the fitness industry. Apparently, I'm not natural. And it's time to put that to rest. Wait, these are not right. <laughs> a week ago, I got tested for anabolics. Listen, I am here to prove that I'm natty. And a lot of you guys aren't believing me. So wait, wait, wait. Let me interject here. Normally, a doping test takes anywhere between two to four weeks to get the results back. So. This is a little bit of a red flag. If it only took one week to get the results back, and then, you know, of course, the editing process takes a couple more days before it's actually live on YouTube. Um, I would say that this doping test might not be as extensive as I would like to see from a, a truly drug-free athlete trying to prove his natty status. And hopefully the blood work alongside of that, because again, the drug test is basically an IQ test with uh, adequate preparation. You can beat it quite easily but then still blood work parameters would be significantly off so hopefully he did uh blood work a year analysis at the same time he would do this doping test uh with whatever uh credited lab um hopefully he'll list that a little bit later in the video you know what i'm gonna do what i have to do i'm gonna make sure this happens let's head inside and pee in a cup do you think i'm natty i don't know <laughs> all right we'll find out all right. so okay one more time i pee 
at least halfway, no more. Okay. Once you're done, don't flush the toilet or wash your hands. Got it. Just I'm going to do my best here, okay? Okay. All right. Ah, okay. Red flag number two. Normally, when you have a doping test, especially at the Olympics or very high-level competitions, the doping officer will watch you pee. You'll have to take your shirt all the, almost off and pants almost all the way off so they can watch you urinate in the cup. And some of these federations go the extra mile. They start inspecting your junk to see if you don't use a stunt. Yes, you can actually buy those online. That is a prosthetic penis where you can use somebody else's urine um, and transfer that into the cup. Um, you know, you can even use a colostomy bag and tap that around your waist if you don't have to show anything to the doping officer and just leak some uh, somebody else's urine into the cup. Hopefully that's fresh, right? Freshly produced on the same day you do your doping test, which in many cases, if you go to the World Championships, bodybuilding competitions or the Olympics, you know exactly when the competition is going to take place. And if you have adequate time to put your clothes back on, use the colostomy bag with uh, somebody else's urine that's produced fresh maybe 10 minutes prior. Then you can simply transfer that uh, from underneath your clothes into the cup when nobody else is looking. So this is red flag number two. Uh, next time, Jesse, please take all of your clothes off, film it with the doping officer present, and then you can use pixelation, right? The long pixelation to blur out your privates. You've shown everything else already. And <laughs> based on this footage, he could literally be pouring somebody else's urine into the cup off camera. So let's continue. Um, hopefully he does a better job going forward. Let's just say your boy's gonna be natty, all right? We find out in 72 hours the final results. Listen, I'm telling you, I'm natural, okay? 72 hours. Well, <laughs> let's wait for the result. Or am I? All right, guys, the urinary test just came in. I have a voicemail from the doctor. We're gonna see what the results are. I know I'm natty, but I have to do this to prove to the internet, you know? Like, you gotta do that. Let's see what they are. I'll be the judge of that. And I'd like to see it on the screen. So reading off the phone doesn't give you the green light to prove that you're natty or not. Uh, we would need to see the full results on the screen with your blood work results, which unfortunately I think Jesse didn't really do. He didn't qualify for Yada. That's the YouTube anti-doping agency that uh, Derek from the More Plates More Dead YouTube channel started. But I believe that only Matas Fitness has the balls to uh, actually pay his way throughout that entire Yada program. And then after six months, or was it nine months, he proved to everybody out there through Derek that it was indeed natural because all his lifts stayed the same. His blood work parameters didn't really change. And he passed various drug tests, which were all random. And the key here is the random ability of these drug tests. Because if you know on the, which day the drug test is going to be performed, whether that's in competition or a week before or a month before, which is what a lot of the national athletes here in Asia are subject to, they have a doping test about a month before the competition and then random on the competition. Usually they check about five athletes, uh, usually the winners, to see if they're drug free or not. And in many cases, most of them fail unless they were under my supervision. So if you know when the drug test is going to take place, you can uh, kind of alter your performance enhancing drug protocol to excrete all of the metabolites by the time the drug test takes place. Or you can use uh, various practices and uh, other compounds to speed up metabolites clearance, right? Which is ultimately what I got hired for. But in Jesse's case, he's getting tested one week before stepping on stage, so he has adequate time to prepare for his doping test, which I'm still not sure which federation, which accredited lab is actually testing his urine. Hopefully we'll explain a little bit later. Hi, Jesse, this is Dr. Unfortunately, your results are going to take a little bit longer. Okay. And sometimes if they come back positive, they have to do two weeks for further testing. So give a call if you have any questions. Hmm. All right. Well, looks like the urinary test is not ready and we have to wait longer. Um, I guess we just got to wait a few more days. Hopefully. We are <laughs> so I know exactly what Jesse is now undergoing. I've had this conversation with many um, of the athletes that uh, were competing in drug tested federations and the uh, different sports. And then they wait two weeks, but they don't get the results back. They wait another two weeks, they don't get the results back. And then the sweat really starts pouring. So maybe Jesse uh, didn't really need to undergo that sauna that he did. All he needed to do for, was wait for this phone call for the doctor whose name shall never be disclosed, for the doctor to tell him that it was going to take um, another week for the doping tests to get back. Um, and then you start sweating profusely anyway, because now you're not entirely sure 
if you beat the test or not, which I'm sure he did uh, based on how he looks. But uh, let's see for the final verdict. Hopefully he's even um, included in this video. And otherwise I'm reacting to this video for no reason at all. Without further ado, it's time to finally reveal my test results. And all right, here we go. The result of Jesse James West forensic drug test result letter is negative. Ladies and gentlemen, your boy. Where's the proof? <laughs> Bro, just showing that it's negative doesn't prove anything. Dude, dude. It's 110% natty. And I'm gonna show you guys, and I'm relentless. So let's keep going, we're almost there. Stay relentless! Peace! Well, I don't really know what to say to this, guys. I mean, it doesn't prove anything. Just having a blurred out picture on the screen showing that you're negative, but we don't know which metabolites you were actually tested for. We don't know what the lab was that you sent your urine sample to. We don't know, or at least we can tell from the footage, you were not observed while peeing in the cup, and we didn't show your um, you know, pixelated junk urinating in the cup as well. So unfortunately jesse this doesn't really prove anything do i believe that you're natural based on your appearance yes i think your physique is completely attainable drug free i don't see any um, noticeable injection sites anywhere on your body not in the side chest not in the side tricep not in the uh, back double bicep or uh, back lat spreads i don't see any vi visible indication of injection sites but then again doug miller doesn't have any visible indication of injection sites as well and i don't think he is natural um, you can always take some orals or SARMs, right? I believe that Doug Miller uh, retired in 2014. Surprisingly, right around the time that Austrian was added to the World Anti-Doping Agency prohibited list and people started failing for it. So they had a test, they added it to the list and people started to fail and Doug Miller retired. Coloration, perhaps, right? I don't think that Doug Miller is drug-free, but Jesse James West, based on his current appearance, I would say that he's drug-free. This is certainly attainable without performance enhancing drugs. Keep in mind that Jesse James West has a ton of financial backing to make this happen. He can eat the best food, he can hire the best coach, he can do all of the blood work, he can get all of the supplements, probably for free anyway. So he can uh, go very, very far with the physique that he was giving with his genetic material that he got from his parents. Um, but when I look at the true drug-free bodybuilders that are, um, for example, under the 3D Muscle Journey team, uh, all of them actually look better, more shredded, more muscular, um, usually a collection of very strong and average body parts, because of course the stronger body parts are going to grow significantly and then the weaker body parts are slowly going to be dieted off. While you're doing a contest prep for usually 20 to 26 weeks, when you're a drug-free athlete, most of those guys would diet a lot, a lot, a lot longer than Jesse James West. So buddy, if you want to prove yourself, let's do it this way. Three random doping tests with the World Anti-Doping Agency where the person, the doping officer, is actually watching you urinate and will sign off on that. You can videotape the entire thing, right? Just pixelate out your junk, but we can all see that you're actually urinating in the cup and the doping officer is verifying that you're not using a stunt or another prosthetic to transfer somebody else's urine into the, um, right, the testing cup. That's uh, rule number one, right? Three random doping tests and you need to pass all of them. Then during the time of the doping test, ideally the same day, you go in for random blood work. So we can see that your total testosterone, your free testosterone, your bioavailable testosterone, your luteinizing hormone, your follicle stimulating hormone, your estrone, estradiol, estriol, your, um, what else, DHA sulfate, pregnenolone perhaps, your entire hormone panel, basically everything that has to do with the endocrine system, regulating your sex hormone and your neurostar production, all within normal parameters. Most of the people who compete at the Olympics get their biological passports, where they do a baseline blood work, which is very extensive, more extensive than I just recommended. And then they start comparing that during the various and random doping tests that they subject yourselves to, uh, besides the urine that needs to be clean, the blood needs to be clean of any kind of metabolite that is prohibited. And their biological passport needs to represent the baseline biological passport at the time that they do these random tests. So you see the baseline blood work is very similar with minor fluctuations allowed and comparing that to the blood test they had to do at the same time they gave their urine sample for testing, right? Comparing the biological passport to the current blood work results and then seeing if there's any discrepancy. Now keep in mind 
that blood doping is a real thing. Uh, living in altitude chambers, right? So the hyperbaric chambers is a real thing. And uh, taking all kinds of performance enhancing drugs, which are technically not on the prohibited list, also a very, very real thing. I mean, just look at the weather approved doping stack of 2022, where I go through the entire prohibited list of 2022 and give you alternatives of performance enhancing drugs, which are not directly included. I mean, that video is like 45 minutes long, right? And it didn't feel like making an update because none of these compounds got added to the 2023 updated version, not on the prohibited list and not on the monitoring program. So just watch that video if you want to get an idea of what you can run and still beat the drug test. Um, it's a very extensive list, and I certainly have a lot more compounds to add to it. So if you would like to see an updated video regarding the World's Anti-Doping Agency doping stack that's approved for 2023, just let me know down below and we'll get to work on it. It will probably be an hour long video in duration. So if you ask for it, you better Watch it all the way through for my audience retention, you mother. All right. So what I would like to see from our Jesse James West, blood work analysis, ideally complete, right? Just a full blood work analysis. You can go to Merrick Health, use my discount code to get 10% off the full panel that I have on display there. That is basically all the metabolic markers that would be affected by the use of performance enhancing drugs, whether those are steroids or peptides or some of the other hypoxic medications that are not included on the World Anti-Doping Agency list, but I would still um, classify people to be not natty if they decide to take them. If you go through that full list on Merrick Health, I'll link it down below, you'll see that there's so many markers included that can certainly pinpoint if you're drug-free or not. Even if some of the markers are off, right? It could be through to um, inflammatory conditions from all of these copious amounts of sweeteners that he was taking, or um, something hereditary, right? Or environmental pollutants or other reasons, right? I'll be able to pinpoint it. But the most important thing is that all of the sex hormones, the endocrine system and the neurosteroids, those are falling within normal parameters. And even then, even then guys, you can keep your serum testosterone levels within normal ranges. You can start injecting luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. Recombinant versions are now available. You can even go with a decent amount of estradiol and use methane to convert into estrogen and estriol, and then use injectable epi uh, testosterone, which you can also source online. It's not that expensive, but you'd have to go through a medical institute or a clinic or a hospital or through the university or get it prescribed through a doctor, right? They always have these connections to get these uh, compounds through Sigma Aldrich or another website that have uh, epi testosterone available for sale for research purposes. Usually the concentrations are quite low, so you can only get one milligram, two milligram, or five milligrams in an ampule or in powder form. Again, you want you don't want to go with something like Underground Lab or Raw Provider because there could be some metabolites or it can be actual epi testosterone, which you can use to beat that four to one uh, ratio of testosterone to epi testosterone in urine, right? There's protocols for this. And even then, if everything is on range on blood work parameters, you can still determine if your testosterone or epi testosterone is coming from endogenous sources with carbon isotope ratio mass spectrometry, which can determine if the carbon within the testosterone or epitestosterone is produced endogenously or exogenously. That there's tests for that as well. So it's actually very hard to beat the drug test if you use exogenous compounds around the time that you're um, undergoing this doping test. There's still ways around it because even a little bit of discrepancy between the labs that are accredited all over the world, the testing equipment, even though they say that it's an accredited lab, some of the testing equipment in one part of the world is actually better than another part of the world. So you really have to take a gamble on where your urine sample or your blood sample is actually sent to and uh, take a gamble on what is actually tested because some of these tests are a little bit more um, inclusive regarding metabolites and particular drug screening than others, right? It depends on how much they spend and how much they're actually looking for. And I'll promise you this, at the next Summer Olympics, you'll see that a lot of new testing parameters and equipments start rolling out. So even though the World Anti-Doping Agency has this prohibited list of 2023 with a ton of new additions that you should avoid, by the time uh, the Summer Olympics roll around and all of these new testing parameters come into practice, which they usually roll out around the Summer Olympics, you start seeing a lot of people fail for drugs that have been on the list for a very long time. And everybody thinks that they know the exact metabolite clearance and particular practices to speed up metabolite clearance. 
But by the time the new testing parameters start rolling out, um, it's a lot more sensitive than what it used to be. So keep that in mind, right? If you want to beat the doping test, there's a lot more things that you need to look into. And if you want to prove that you're natural, Mr. Jesse James West, um, yeah, do a little bit better because this really doesn't really prove anything. And then when everything is said and done and all of the tests have been performed and the results are out, then please, for sake, just post them online. I mean, I post all of my blood work here online as well, but I'm not lying or abstaining from discussing performance enhancing drugs, right? So when the results are out, just post them online for the world to see and scrutinize and review and confirm by calling the doping officer or calling the accredited lab where these tests have been performed to verify that these results are legitimate and not made in Photoshop, right? We can use the serial codes and all of these customer codes and all of the kind of good stuff to kind of verify if these results are legitimate and review them publicly on YouTube, right? If you want to um, confirm that you're drug-free, Mr. Jesse James West, you need to publicize the results alongside of your current blood work results. I think that Jesse James West is doing a good job for the fitness community, getting a lot of people in the gym. Um, and if he doesn't want to talk about performance enhancing drugs and just throw in a couple of memes here and there, I get it. But I do feel that he is the kind of guy who would be forthcoming and forthright and honest by the time he decides to try a little bit of performance enhancing drugs, which uh, for a guy um, of his caliber, I think at one point is going to happen because, you know, at one point the, he will get older, his testosterone levels will decline. And then keeping in that physical appearance and shape that he has right now, unfortunately, he's going to require some TRT plus or plus or even more an actual steroid cycle. So it's only a matter of time before Jesse James West joins the dark side. Keep in mind that there's a select few people out there who respond better to this bodybuilding or fitness game than the majority of the people out there. And the majority of the people, when they go on YouTube, they don't go as far because they don't look as impressive and they don't have the genetic response. It's usually the guys that have a little bit better genetic response and the financial backing, which came through hard work. I mean, you don't go a YouTube channel to 3 million followers just by half-assing it. I mean, he puts in a lot of work on his videos. I can easily tell being a YouTuber myself. So in his case, he just has better response than average. He puts in the work, right? He's afraid to fail because he's such a public persona. So he doesn't um, right, uh, cheat on his diet and miss cardio sessions and uh, maybe have to a little bit on pausing practice, but again, He's probably very, very busy with his YouTube channel also, and he's still maintaining an upload schedule, even though he's on contest prep. I mean, how many professional bodybuilders disappear in the middle of contest prep and then they suddenly appear on stage a couple of weeks later? He's still training with Ronnie Coleman for sake. So give him a little bit of credit, guys. He's putting in the work. He looks good, better than average, but it doesn't mean he's on performance enhancing drugs. Could I be mistaken? I'll be the first one to admit it. Um, can he do better on the drug testing that he just undertook? Of course he could, right? But based on how he appears, based on what I've seen after 25 years in the bodybuilding space, I think he's natty. For how long, that remains to be seen. And let's just leave it there. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find everything that I'm associated with down below in the YouTube description section. All of my sponsors and affiliates are there. And otherwise, head over to my website, vigorsteve.com. I might have a few sponsors and affiliates there secretly waiting for you. Have a look at some of the articles. They're all free for your reading enjoyment. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Vigor Steve. Vigor's crew, you guys know what to do. A front double bicep for you guys. Um, certainly not natty, but I don't pretend to be. This entire YouTube channel is dedicated to the safer use of performance enhancing drugs. So stick around. You might learn something new every single video. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next one.